Oh, the Philly almost went down. The Philly all hurt. The round is almost over. The round is over. The last couple of fights that I had, I would take my shower, get dressed, walk out of the gym, not talk to anybody. I was 34 years old, and I'm driving in my car, and I'm all by myself, but I'm thinking about this. And I said, Carmen, it's time to retire. In 1961, Carmen Basilio fought his last fight, a valiant but losing bid for Paul Pender's middleweight title. By this time, the legal troubles of Frankie Carbo had escalated when he and four other defendants, Blinky Palermo, Truman Gibson, Louis Dragna, and Joseph Seeker, were tried in Los Angeles on charges of extortion and conspiracy. There was bail set for Carbo on our charge of $100,000, which in those days was a very big bail. To give you an idea how big it was, I started working as a federal prosecutor for $4,250 a year. The government's key witness was West Coast matchmaker Jackie Leonard. Leonard had promoted the welterweight title fight between Virgil Akins and Don Jordan, and then refused to give up a piece of Jordan. When the mob came to collect, Leonard was attached to a pair of FBI wiretaps. Carbo called Leonard cross country and told him he was gonna come out there to the West Coast and gouge out his eyes. The mob flourished under J. Edgar Hoover until uh, Bobby Kennedy came in as, a, as attorney general and said, let's get the mob. Lead prosecutor Alvin Goldstein and assistant counsel Robert Heinerfeld were chosen to try the government's case against Carbo and his associates. When uh, Palermo was being cross-examined by Goldstein, Goldstein had got him to lay out their modus operandi of controlling the fight titles. And finally, Palermo says, We've been doing this for years. This is the first time they made a case like this out of it. By the end of the three-month-long trial, the government's case proved overwhelming, and all five defendants were found guilty. I went to work for the Genesee Brewing Company out of Rochester, New York. And within a week after that, I had a telephone call from the athletic director at Le Moyne College, and they offered me a job there as a phys ed teacher. Basilio had gone back to a simple life, far from the arenas where he had pounded out a living with his fists, farther still from the dark forces he had battled outside the ring. Camus has a character in one of his novels say, that sanctity and heroism don't matter to me. What interests me is in being a man. And I think Carmen Basilio is a man, a good man. Carmen and I, we got close because many times we were together at different events, and we became friends. My son was 14 years old. He died from a car accident. Basilio, he heard about it, and for respect that he had for me, he came to Boston, he stayed with us, he came to the funeral with us. And uh, that was, I, I never, I never forget him. Basilio was a great fighter. Had all the bravery and grit that we all like to see in a fighter. He was ferocious in the ring. He was humble enough to kneel in the ring. He was man enough to cry in the ring. Tony DeMarco probably said it best. Uh, at their 30th reunion, of the night that Basilio won the welterweight championship of the world. Over the years, I've come to understand that I couldn't have lost to a better fighter or a better human being than Carmen Basilio.